Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chris M., and I'd like to welcome you to another conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Uh, in this conversation, I'd like to discuss with you about the flesh teacher, meaning the, the incarnated human being that uh, has the Kundalini and that has been given a purpose to teach you and help you with yours. Before I do that, before we have our conversation, I would like to thank uh, Amelia Centara uh, and her family for sponsoring this program and allowing this information to be given to you. Uh, so thank you, Amelia Centara. And I would also like to thank uh, Eileen Laurel for the many ways that she has blessed this program and has allowed this program to go forward. She is the, uh, a Kundalini ambassador, and so I'd like to thank Eileen. So thank you, Eileen. And I would like to thank all of you listeners who are listening right now and are also listening in the future via the archives. So thank you for listening in the future, all of those who are hearing this on the archives. Um, there are a few places where you can get this information, and one of them is Kundalini Awakening Systems, the number one, dot com. So that's Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com. And there are various communities. Uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems One at Yahoo Groups dot com, and Kundalini Awakening Systems One at uh, Facebook Groups. Uh, another one is Kundalini uh, Awakening Exclamation Point at Facebook Groups and a Kundalini Ashram at Facebook Groups as well. So those are some other options that people have uh, to get this information. Another one is on YouTube. Uh, there are about 241, somewhere around there, uh, videos uh, that I've given about the Kundalini uh, on YouTube, and, and you just need to punch in Chris and Kundalini, and it'll take you right there, and you'll 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 see some of the uh, videos pop up. So if you if you like to look at videos and, and learn through the video medium, then that is available for you. There is a Boston seminar coming up in October 19th and 20th. Uh, Liz is the person who is in charge of that, and I would like to thank Liz for her efforts in uh, in uh, getting this information out to to the blessed people on the East Coast. So thank you, Liz. Um, uh, you can you can reach her by her email, which is l z h a o six the number six at comcast dot net. So that is l z h a o the number six at comcast.net and once again I'd like to thank you Liz for for participating in this way uh, so without further ado I'm going to to begin with this program the flesh teacher the first thing a person needs to understand with the kundalini is that the kundalini is always inside a person from birth to death and then, of course, beyond death into what people would call the afterlife. Kundalini is always present within the lifetime of the person and the afterlifetime of the person. It is a constant stream of divine evolution within the person that, that goes beyond the corporeal life existence and yet is part of the corporeal life difference. Now, for those of you that have had kundalini come up or who want to have kundalini come up, well, you you are given very special opportunities to, to bring that fruition uh, into being for yourselves. The first flesh kundalini teacher is your flesh. Your flesh and the kundalini. Uh, as the kundalini begins to condition your body for its expression through your body, certain proclivities and learnings and understandings will be given. Some of the first of these learnings and, and 
understandings will be given through the laws of karma. You will often, not everyone, but many people will often learn what it is uh, to have a lot of the karma come up for balancing at the same time. This can make life somewhat difficult because it's not just the good karma that comes up, but a lot of it is the difficult karma that's coming up. And it's coming up not from just one lifetime ago, but perhaps from many lifetimes ago. And and because this is your time of exaltation, the Kundalini will begin to move that karma into a balancing position so that you can have the divine exaltation in your body at this time, in this lifetime. And so the karma, the karma will bring issues into your life, issues of difficulty, issues of fear, issues of of want and need and desire and pleasure and pain and all of these different areas that uh, that karma likes to to work with in this way. And so I want you to understand that your flesh which encases your consciousness, is going to be taught first from the kundalini, secondarily from the karma that the kundalini brings into your equation. And then and then thirdly, from a, a another person uh, such as myself or other people who are able to help you come into balance with the actual energy of the kundalini in and upon the body. So this is a this is just a typical outline. Now the the first of the teachers of course is the kundalini always. The kundalini will steer you into the karma that it wants you to complete in order for you to have and hold the kundalini in its more tactile and sensational uh, expression. These karmas can last a long time, and a lot of it depends on how much you resist going through that karma. And and you know, it is understood that you're going to resist it. You're not going to just step into a difficult karma, going, "Oh, yay!" You don't. <laughs> it's not the easiest thing to do, uh, and it's not supposed to be easy. This is something that you need to understand. It isn't supposed to be easy. The challenging karmas are there because they're challenging. And they're writing a lot of imbalances within within your equation and as these imbalances are are you know are brought back into balance, well then your equation can move forward but first first, the first teaching in this context is that you must have the karma. Now, if you know, if you know about karma and if you know that you are, you know, that you have a lifetime that is of a kundalini expression, then it can be easier for for you because you don't resist as much. But uh, if you're like most people in the West, and and by the West I'm, I'm including all of Europe, all of the United States and Canada, Mexico, and some of South America, um, Australia, um, uh, parts of Asia, Russia, uh, people that basically are dependent upon uh, a scientific method for for identifying their reality. Okay, so as as we in the West you know, encounter a, a, a trouble or a problem, something that's causing us pain, we're going to go into resistance. We're going to go into resistance. And, and as we go into resistance, uh, that kundalini force behind us is going to push us into the karma even stronger. So, so as we resist, we tend to back away from going through shall we say, the doorway of that karma. And the the kundalini is actually pushing us through the doorway into the karma. And so there's a bit of a struggle there between not wanting to go and the kundalini saying, well, yes, you're going to go. 
And and this has all kinds of ramifications. Sometimes uh, if you have been living a, a nice life and, 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 you know, not a lot of difficulties, and all, all of a sudden all these difficulties will shower down upon you. And, uh, you know, this is not the easiest thing. And so uh, as you go through these difficulties and as you, you may be having these difficulties right now, those of you who are listening to this show, you may, oh, my gosh, Ever since the Kundalini came up, oh, it's been so hard, it's been so bad, it's been so difficult, and I just want you to stop resisting it. Know that you are in a Kundalini refining process. And by refining, I'm referring to uh, bringing out that karmic... uh, uh, Detritus, I mean, that's not the word, but it is, a, it, it's an appropriate word, but not everybody knows what it means. The karmic garbage, shall we say, shall we say that? The karmic imbalances that need to be balanced. And so, that refinement process is separating the garbage from the true self. And, and so, as you, as you get rid of the garbage, as you take out the garbage, uh, you are able to, to become closer and closer and closer to the self, that part of you that can have the kundalini in a way that is productive and yes, your joy will return, your love will return, you know, all the beautiful things of life that you have that you have experienced uh, can be returned to you, but it, it's returned with a much larger level of knowledge. You have far more knowledge now than you ever did before. And so this this is important for you to understand because some, you know, in, in many cases, if not most cases, you're going to have to go through some difficulties in order to get to the, shall we say, the, the, clean, the clean air and the clean water and the clean energy of some of the higher elevations of your soul development. Okay. So what, the first teacher is the Kundalini, and it will steer you into the classrooms of karma. And this karma will begin to refine you uh, through its own equation. You don't get to choose which karma is coming to you. You don't get to choose at all how the karma is coming to you from a from a, um, a five cents flesh uh, encased spiritual basis. You did choose. Uh, before you took the body to have this experience, and so of course, uh, you know, from the larger viewpoint, you did make these choices. But while you're in the body and you're behind the veil of forgetfulness, it will seem as if you have no choice, and and you will indeed have no choice. Uh, the Kundalini will take those choices and direct the karma in such a way that allows you to refine yourself into a point where the kundalini can be held and come through you in a stronger way. So that is the first of the flesh teachings that the kundalini will will assert itself upon you with. Uh, And as the karma, as you go through the karma, the laws of karma will take place and and you will experience the, the challenges that, that the the karma is bringing into you and and some of the karma will be good karma too it's not all challenging karma in the sense that oh my gosh you know i'm I'm poor or i have no money or my you know my relationship's falling apart or you know any any of the many many ways that the challenging karmas can can refine us uh some of the karma that comes in is good because it's important for you to know that you can survive this. This isn't anything that is designed to destroy you at all. This is, in fact, this is more life-affirming than than uh, than destruction. This is, and sure, you know, you're going to lose some things. You're going to lose, say, your dependence on on material items for happiness. You'll lose your dependence upon. Uh, uh, allowing people to walk all over you for self-identification, you will learn. You know, you will you you will lose many qualities that you may have developed through your uh, through your life and the karma that has been given to you. Uh, you may lose some of these qualities, but you'll gain 
a much greater awareness and a new quality of self-confidence and self-validation uh, than you may have had before. And so this this is something that I want you to also consider. I would also like you to consider that that as these teachings continue, that you will become lighter and lighter and lighter. And as you as your energy becomes lighter, so do some of the phenomena become less heavy upon you. Uh, because the, the, the second tier of teachings that the Kundalini will bring into the flesh are its its uh, phenomena of presence within you, such as the Kriyas, as, as we've discussed on a, on a very challenged radio show before, uh, but also through through your dream life and through the the so-called coincidences that are that aren't coincidences that uh, that come to you, uh, you know, as you as you live your life, uh, job coincidences or relation coincidence or any of these things that will occur to a person throughout their their uh, initial Kundalini awakening experiences. So so know this, that the Kriyas and all the phenomena, the entities, all the phenomena that come to a person as the Kundalini begins to express itself are there as also as part of that refinement process, part of the loosening of the illusory qualities of the five sense life as you as you come into the unlimited the unlimited sense life of the Kundalini awakened individual. And this, this, my friend, this takes time. This is not an overnight pattern. If it were overnight, most people would just die, okay? Because the level of karma would be so strong, and the, the level of resistance would be so strong, and the, and the the changes would be too big and too burgeoning for a person to be able to withstand. Uh, so this, this, you know, this is a a trickle teaching. It trickles out. And, in small amounts, so that people can acclimate and, and process uh, the teaching and then open themselves to more teaching. So uh, please be aware of that. And then the third tier of teaching, uh, of the flesh teachings, will be an actual Kundalini awakened flesh teacher, which is what I'm doing. The Kundalini will lead you to this person. You, as an ego personality, do not have the expanded uh, insights and and source in order to choose a teacher that is appropriate for your kundalini expansion within within your body. But your kundalini does have that information. It has your information, and it will select a teacher for you. And and one of the first things you will, well, how will I recognize that teacher? Well, you'll recognize that teacher by virtue of of the the level of information that your kundalini triggers a response for you with. So as you as you have that level of of uh, reciprocal uh, resonance with with the the with the flesh teacher that you may be reading of or watching on a video or seeing in a movie or seeing in person, uh, then you can begin to understand that, oh, this may be a teacher that I can have for my kundalini. And what you want to do, though, is you want to make sure that you separate the teacher for the kundalini as different from the, the, the teacher for the karma. Um, during the difficult karmic periods, Different teachers may present themselves and then, and then you may lose interest in them. Uh, if you happen to find or if the Kundalini shows you a Kundalini, a flesh Kundalini teacher earlier in your process, the flesh Kundalini teacher can help you through your karma. Okay, because they already have reference point for karmic uh, uh, balancing. And so they can, they can help you with that. So if your Kundalini has landed you upon a teacher that is is alive, not dead, but alive, uh, then then that teacher can assist you uh, 
you know, through the many levels of karmic balancing into an opening, a, an opening of the the body for more kundalini saturation. Okay, and and I and I, you know, yes, yes, from a from a larger context, that there is no death and everything is alive, and, and so you can say, well, you know. Osho is alive and he's not dead or or you know you know Sarah Brustra is alive and he's not dead and so therefore we can all learn from these from these teachers and I'm saying well maybe not uh, uh Osho may have other things to do uh it doesn't just because a person reaches into the divine expression on this world doesn't mean that they don't have other work to do that is not of this world, and, and that goes for Osho or Zarathustra or Yogananda or any, you know, Ramakrishna, Vivekananda, Aurobindo. I mean, you name it. Uh, you know, there is more to go uh, once you you reach into the into the, the heavenly fields. You know, there's there's some some farm work to be done in those heavenly fields, just to use a a weak analogy. Uh, you know, the, the fields have to be maintained or harvested or whatever the divine uh, requires of a person who is there now. They're not always tied to the relationships of physicality that they developed while they were in the body. Okay? Now, through their teachings, of course, the teachings will live li- live on and, and they, they may serve you well. And so in that in that scenario... A, a dead teacher can still have positive influence upon the living uh, student in that regard, but unless there is a a, a divine uh, a divine desire to have that teacher coming back through and through, say such as a Christ or a Buddha or someone like that, then uh, typically no. Typically, the people uh, who achieve Divinity will move on. Uh, not not always, but typically. Uh, so so know that when I'm talking about a flesh teacher, I'm talking about a living teacher, one that you can call on the phone, one that you can visit in person, and you want to to you know do your best to not resist the Kundalini's guidance within you. Uh, Kundalini knows your equation, your Kundalini awakening equation, better than your ego self does or your five-sense self does. And by the five-sense self, I'm talking about the body, the mental mind, the emotional body, the psychological body, and the spiritual body. Uh, Kundalini knows those aspects of yourself better than you do, simply because Kundalini is within the last three vertebrae of your spine. It's been dormant with you your whole life. It's been waiting for you to experience levels of karma that would allow you to become refined enough to move into these higher levels of of, of learning through itself. It's been waiting to become that divine teacher for you waiting for you, gauging your response to the many different levels of karma that come and, and uh, you know, all of these different things. And so what I'm going to encourage you to do is I'm going to encourage you to realize, number one, that you're having kundalini. You can match that up with your symptoms. The symptoms of kundalini are fairly clear, even though your rational mind will go, oh, my God, I can't be seeing that, or, oh, my God, I can't be experiencing that. Oh, my God, what is going on? You know, your rational mind is going to be in shock uh, with many of the phenomena that accompany Kundalini awakening. And that's okay. That's absolutely all right. Be, you know, the, 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 the shock can be done. That, that can be handled. That is a typical part of the process. But then again, you don't want to, to continue to engage the, the ego aspect of the rational mind in in trying to come to a diagnosis or conclusion about what is happening. Instead, you can actually match up your symptoms with Kundalini. You want to let you want to let the Kundalini do that for you. 
The ego mind has very little knowledge about the kundalini. The rational mind has even less. So, so to uh, understand that you're having kundalini, match up your symptoms. You know the the uh, the heat at the base of the spine, the, the the energy going up the spine, or the feeling of a presence within your spine. Uh, snake dreams, or spider dreams, or wolf dreams. Uh, you know the many different. Uh, the, you know the the. the the soft, cool breeze blowing into your face in a closed room, uh, seeing the, the divine visions that are that shouldn't be in the room with you, but yet there they are. The the, the scent of beautiful flowers blooming uh, where no flowers are. The chanting of monks. I mean, the, you know, the many different uh, expressions that the Kundalini comes uh, into a person with. The flesh teacher can help you with this. The flesh teacher can help you recognize this. And so when the kundalini chooses a flesh teacher for you, uh, explore that opportunity with great uh, surrender. Uh, you, You may not like the way the person looks. You may not like what the person is saying because maybe it goes against your belief system. So you, you have a belief system that outlines your reality to be just, this way, it's A plus B equals C, and and, uh, and the Kundalini is all of a sudden go no no no, A plus B equals uh, X Y Z, and you may feel like oh well that's just not right, and so you'll go into resistance with that. I don't want you to go into that resistance. I want you to explore the idea of A plus B equals X Y Z, realizing that your Kundalini knows more about. The, the understanding of divinity within your life than your rational or ego mind does. So, so as as you begin to understand you have kundalini and the kundalini drives you to different teachers, accept those teachers. Those teachers at first may come in books. They can be living teachers or dead teachers, but their knowledge will begin to sculpt your understanding. And as you begin to expand your understanding the kundalini may be preparing you for a living flesh teacher that you can interact with uh, on a daily, if not uh, uh, weekly or monthly, however, whatever basis that that, uh, develops for you that is comfortable for you. I find that I have very few accidental students. All of the students that I have have come through the kundalini, even when they have been in severe disagreement with me. And they have allowed their their ego to flame out and to you know to begin to create uh, you know untruthful scenarios about their interactions with me. Their kundalini has brought them there. Their kundalini has brought them there, and your kundalini may be bringing you to this teaching right now. It's not always going to be easy. It will not always be something that you will agree with, especially for those of us in the West. I was so anti-teacher for such a long time in my early part of my process. Uh, like nobody can teach me. Gosh darn it! I am, I am, I am strong, and I can suffer through all of this. Gosh dang it! I don't need anybody to teach me. <laughs> can you hear any ego there? <laughs> Believe me, this went on for years. So, so you know, I can laugh at myself now, but I know that there are plenty of you out there who are saying the same thing. I don't need to be taught. You know, I'm, I'm perfect. Oh, and then you get into the New Age people that are saying, well, you're just perfect the way you are. You know, and of course you are. Of course you are perfect the way you are. But uh, you could be, <laughs> there's more perfection for to, to be had and, and the way you are is not the way the kundalini will keep you. The kundalini will change you, and it will change you uh, within its divine expression into that luminous light being that 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 all religions lead to, that you know many of the New Age people aspire to, but don't know because 
it's not happening to them, that they, they aspire towards that. Uh, and so you will have to let go of that idea of, oh, I don't need to be taught. Because the Kundalini won't allow it to remain so. It will not allow that to remain so, and it will refine you and refine you and refine you. And, and I want to give the analogy of a rock polisher. You, you put the rock into the rock polisher, and it, and it tumbles it around for a long time. It tumbles it around and it takes off all the sharp, jagged edges and it comes out this beautiful gem in, in the case of Kundalini people. But the polishing process can be difficult. Slam it into a wall and having your rough edges polished smooth. You know, the, the rocks will often scream as that is occurring and, and so will the people. So will the people off the screen with that is occurring. And, and that had to happen to me. I was in the rock polisher for a very, 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 very long time. <laughs> and I'm sure, I'm sure some of you are in the rock polisher right now, but maybe, maybe it won't have to be such a long time for you because of these teachings. That is my, that is my wish anyway. So, so as you're introduced, to a teacher, let's just say you're introduced to a Yogananda or an Aurobindo or a uh, or a uh, any other a, a, you know person who has obviously had the Kundalini working through them, and so you learn certain levels of life experience from them, and then the Kundalini introduces you to a living teacher, a person that has the Kundalini, a person that is that will give you. Uh, Shaktipat, a person that will give you real time uh, uh, advice and teaching that that pertain to you alone, or to you and many other people. Sometimes the teachings are are uh, broad based, and sometimes the teachings are narrow based. Uh, don't resist that teacher. Don't expect that teacher to to uh, live up to your expectation, but allow your kundalini to to lead you into those teachings as if you were a child, like Christ said, come as a child. Well, I would suggest that you come into these kundalini teachings as a child, a mind that is wide open and curious about the beautiful world that is that is developing within them. That the kundalini world will develop within you first and then outside of you secondarily, just like the sacred feminine will come up uh, from your feet to the first chakra and all the way up first, and the sacred male will join her from the external area and the marriage will take place at the top of the head, at the crown chakra. Okay, so, so realize that your kundalini is leading you to a flesh teacher uh, and, and recognize that and honor that. Honor that gift of the Kundalini to you. Um, I'm going to have. Uh, I'm going to. Uh, right now, I have uh, Amelia Centara on the line, and Eileen, and and another student who's just listening. And uh, I'm going to ask uh, them uh, their their feelings about what it is for them to have a a flesh teacher. And how that may be different from, say, a, a Christ or a Yogananda or somebody who has died, uh, and where that works for them in their Kundalini development. And the first one that I'll talk with about that will be uh, Santara. Santara, can you come online? Hello. H Hello, Chris. I'm here. Hi. Hello. Uh, can you? Uh, can Hi. you? Uh, yeah, I, tell I everybody? would. Um, yeah, Kundalini definitely knew that I needed a life teacher. If you were saying that, I was laughing because, you know, Amelia and Tara certainly wouldn't have chosen a teacher at all, you know. Um, and as I look back, the Kundalini had begun to condition me way before I had any clue about Kundalini through books and through various other ways, um, like even way before my awakening event, um, 
before the divine awakened in my own body. And, um, you know, when that happened for a while, I was in this amazing place of bliss and unity of consciousness and all of that. But it was after that when I began to feel um, a change, when I began to feel some fear. Um, I suppose the long and the short of it is that my Kundalini led me to the Kundalini awakening to the site, and I began to read um, Prism's teachings and how I knew um, that Prism was going to become my teacher was because there was an immediate resonance and um, there was a knowing within me from my Kundalini that these teachings were for me on the path that I was on, and I knew that I was on a path, not a path that I completely understood. I mean, I didn't understand it at all, really. But I read about surrender, and I knew that that was the way I was supposed to go. I read about having no fear. I read about coming as a child, um, you know, the safety. And all of those things really resonated with my true self, and with the Kundalini in me. And so that was how I began my relationship with my Kundalini teacher, you know, through, through those um, invitations, through those teachings that I had got from the Kundalini within me through the Kundalini within prison. And I knew that from the very beginning. Um, and so, well, I suppose, you know, from, from the very start, I suppose from the very start, there was a union between what I knew from my own Kundalini and what Kudra spoke. My teacher spoke in union with the Kundalini in me. And the re- and I knew that because of the response of my Kundalini. My Kundalini would communicate with me through phenomena, through infusions, through energy. And it was, you know, when I followed the teachings, when I chose not to go into fear when I surrendered as, um, you know, the teachings were given through prison. Well, then, as I began to practice the safety, all of these things were, you know, the tools and the gifts and the choices that my Kundalini was offering to me through the intellect teacher. And, um, and you know, in doing all of those things, I know now. I knew too at the time, but looking back, I can see how there was a lot of purification going on in, and a lot of refinement. And, you know, so having having a, a real flesh teacher allowed me to surrender to Kundalini in a much greater way than if I was on my own with my ego personality. My ego personality, is this making sense? My ego personality could not have done it as I did it on its own. So, like, I know and have had no doubt in the beginning that Kundalini selected a teacher for me because it knew me better. <laughs> it knew that I could not do it on my own, that my ego was resisted. And um, what right, Kundalini right. It, it would be hard for this. You know? For the person to, it to been, come to the, the Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes. So. Well, thank um, you. Thank, thank you, Amelia. Thank you for, for relating that. And I'm going to also. Yeah, there's a I'm lot more. Ask, uh, <laughs> oh, I know. I know. There's a lot more. I, I know. Um, I'm going to also ask Eileen uh, to come online here, Eileen. Um. I'm here. I'm, Can you Are you there? Me? Yes, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. here. Can you tell the people a little okay. bit about your experience? Well, I, mine is, is somewhat different than uh, Santara's in that when the Kundalini came to me, I had really had no experience before that. I didn't even know what it was. I didn't have a name for it. And when it came... It's like I, I got on the computer and I started looking around, and all of a sudden I knew what it was. It was Kundalini. And within a very short research or searching on the computer, I found Prism. I found the CAS, the Kundalini Awakening System site, and I found you. 
And somehow I knew, like Amelia, as Santara has said, that she just knew. And somehow I knew that I needed a teacher, and that teacher was to be Chrism. And I didn't, I had never really followed anyone before. I had not done a lot of reading. Uh, This was all new to me. And I am a librarian by trade, and I love words. And what really struck me were the teachings, the writings. And I've said it many, many times, I love the writings that come through you from Shakti. They are uh, very to the point. They're, in a sense, they're simplistic, and I don't mean that as a a negative thing. Um, They're very easy to read, and they can be understood um, wherever a person is. Like, I will read an article or a teaching, and I'll understand some of it. And then the next time I read it, I'll pick up something else. And so it was the teachings um, and the fact that all of a sudden things were becoming more clear by the reading of the teachings. Um, it is di- excuse me, it is different having a flesh teacher than um, a teacher that you can read about. Um, how, how is not- how is that different for you, Eileen? Um. I, well, right now I'm reading the, that book, um, Autobiography of a Yogi, and the people in there are all past. And it's, I mean, I like what they have, what Yogananda is saying, and it's its an interesting story, but I need something more tangible. I need to be able to see a person, see someone, talk to someone, um it just it makes it easier for me because I have a very strong ego, as you know, and some reading a book is not going to help me. I don't feel um, it's it's just for me it's made um, made it easier on the one hand to have a, a person that I can relate with. Um, it hasn't been easy. But now looking back on this six years, um, I feel really good about what happened, even though I know I'm not quite there or it's going to take a while. I feel really good about what has has occurred, and it would not have occurred had I not had a living teacher. Um, Well, I must say, Eileen, in your defense, you know, you've had some, some very strong, karmic uh, blockages come up, uh, but I feel that you're facing them in in the way that your kundalini is allowing you to face them, and and uh, so don't 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 hit yourself too hard with that. Everybody develops at their own rate. It's not a race, and uh, it's been an honor to to be and continue to be uh, your flesh teacher for your kundalini awakening. And, and thank you, Eileen, for, for coming online and, and giving a little bit of an idea for other people to, to learn from what it is to have a kundalini teacher as opposed to a, shall we say, a, 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 a um, what do you, what would you call it, a, uh, a, a minister or a pastor or a reverend or, or somebody of that nature. Now, we have another student who is just listening, uh, Rosemary. Uh, would you would you care to come on line, Rosemary, just uh, and maybe give a little bit of your experience with a, with a flesh teacher? Hi, yes. Rosemary. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. I was about to find the button to push uh, because I'm remembering my youth I'm an older person now, but I remember early in my youth having a spiritual guide and and reading John of the Cross it was part of the life that I lived then and Teresa of Avila and finding it, well, this could never be. and But that was the, like a foundation 
for that relationship of a spiritual director. And then many years without that, and I agree with uh, someone who just said about being, uh, that the Kundalini, uh, Chris, you said our Kundalini leads us into the places that we are to hear about Kundalini. And I knew, heard the word twice and then was sitting uh, two years ago in a seminar. So I know that that was being led. What I find now is there's, I'm sure it's not 100% willingness, but an openness and willingness to be led and to be searching that direction. I I know that I know nothing about how this goes or how this works. If I did, I would have been here by now, but I'm I haven't. And so I know I don't know. And I look forward to conversations with Chrisim when he can be listening for what it is that I need to practice or change my practice. And it, they're very is this very touching for me because they're very small things, but it's powerful. I have grown in preparation for this to really know the limitations of the ego life and that that that's not enough to be spiritually present and so that much i know but i didn't you you can't do it yourself you 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 can't pull yourself through it you you can't see the the person who knows and can it's like being blindfolded i think walking and you're blindfolded but I have greatly been blessed, Kristen, by your guidance, your direction, and see the results and the presence, awareness I have. I haven't had that spinal sweep, but I have an awareness of Kundalini's presence in me and guiding me, and I have a, a peacefulness. You, 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 you Rosemary, you, you know the gift of that, that primary teacher, which is mm-hmm. the Kundalini. Feel it. Mm-hmm. You feel it mm-hmm. guiding you and directing you, and and basically, I, I feel that there is a level of harmony uh, between uh, what I guide you to do and what it guides you to do. Have you experienced mm-hmm. that? Mm-hmm. Well, and thank yet, you, my dear. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, without your being like a, a translator, an observer. You can help me see that. I I don't think, at least at this not at this point in my life and this journey, that I would be seeing that myself or even hearing it. Well, yeah, the the the, the ego and the the rational mind might just yeah. get in the way of, of, of understanding. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you. Thank you, dear Rosemary, for, for, for calling in, and, uh, and much appreciated. Uh, I would like to give the call-in number right now, and, and that number is uh, area code 347-934-0026. That is 347-934-0026. And I see some familiar faces on the uh, chat. Uh, group there, Fosh G, if you'd like to call in, um, or or anyone, anybody can call in if they have a question about their Kundalini awakening experience, or or maybe a family member is going through Kundalini, or a friend, uh, please feel free to call in, the number is 347-934-0026, and I see, Centara, that you're back online. Did you have some more that you'd like to add? Centara. Well, I just want to say, Chris, and that, you know, Kundalini is such an incredible event within my life, and that the the difference, you know, not to have a Kundalini awakened teacher, I just can't imagine what my journey would have been like without that. And um, the difference with an intellect teacher means, you know, an intellect teacher can respond to me in real time. Um, with what is happening with me in my process um, and can understand the phenomena, can understand what's going on and um, in that way it is very different to, you know, picking up a book or or reading in general terms about um, Kundalini Awakening. 
I have an interactive oh, teacher. <laughs> and I give thanks to that every day. <laughs> okay, I think we have I'll another caller. Me. One moment, and I'll check. Hello, you're on with Chrisom. Hello. Hello. Are you just did, did you just want to listen? I'll put you back on hold. Oh, it's Basti. Hello, Basti. Can you is your phone working there? You'll have to you'll have okay. to talk through Basti is being patched. Through now, I think we can speak to each other. Quickly. Hello, Fashi. Hello, Fashi. I see. You, I see you're there, but I'm not hearing your words. You should be uh, one moment. Okay. Okay. So. Yes, that was so, me. I'm um, back. What's that, Amelia? Oh. Okay. Bashji, can you hear? Can you speak? Can you can you say something? I don't know if you're talking on Skype or or if you have your cell phone there. Um okay, all right. So so we'll we'll, we'll see if we can get back to Bashji uh, later in the program. He's going to um, bring back Chris. Okay, very good. Very good, very good. Uh when you have a flesh teacher, it's very important for you to know that you must surrender yourself to that flesh teacher. And so there's an element of discernment that you must you must have with your kundalini to give yourself permission to surrender to that flesh person. And I don't mean that you surrender in a way that... that that you would to a, a conqueror or an enemy or anything like that. It's more that you surrender to the teachings, that you that you take the teachings to heart, that you obey the teachings within you. And I use that terrible word obey that the ego hates to hear. Um, I think it's very important that you allow yourself to go into a complete surrender uh, to the Kundalini. It looks like we may have Vashti back again. Bring him on here. Hello, Vashti. Master C, finally. Ah, <laughs> so good to hear you. Good to hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. I, um, Thank you for calling in, Vashti. That's very yes. nice of you. Oh no, no, no! I, I felt it an honor to 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 be able to speak to you, uh, my two sisters, uh, Santara and Elaine, and uh, as well as you, Master C. Uh, I, this is a, a most extraordinary uh, topic, and I, I can't say how important it is, indeed, to have a flesh teacher. There is that wave of grace that passes between um, the, the disciple or, or a follower and the, um, the living master or the, the, the living teacher that is uh, a part of this whole process uh, of awakening. And I, I, I was just, um, I was sitting here and I was telling my wife, I said, you know about my my um, experiences, and and I'm gonna I'm going I'll I'll call back in later, and, and we'll talk about that because I want to hear the rest of what you you're about to say. But um, you know I we are determined that I'm a top down, so I'm, I'm a little bit different, and I wanted to sort of uh, explore that with you because you know I I have recently been been having some most extraordinary experiences. Oh, well, good, good. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, a top-down, a top-down uh, Kundalini uh, awakening indicates that the person has has activated at the, at the crown first, and that the energy is flowing uh, downward uh, through the chakras, uh, and 
you know, the, the, the person, and this happened, this is not as uncommon as it might sound, but a person is going through the refinement process uh, from the top down. And, and uh, this, is, this, is, this is a somewhat challenging way to go from refinement into density, but it is what we do as spirits in a body. We go from a very refined state in the spiritual form into a dense body, and, and as difficult as that can be, it is one of the ways that, that this type of a, of a thing occurs, and I see that you, you, you logged off there, Fashi, uh, but I want to thank you for, for calling in, and I'd be happy to talk with you about your uh, specific Kundalini awakening experience. Uh, Top-down experiencers can be uh, challenged much by the by the karma that has been accrued, and and uh, in many ways, uh, the people that that do a lot of astral projection, or say uh, people that uh, uh, really work to to develop skills that have to do with the spirit journeying, or or any of a number of goal based uh, belief systems that allow people to to harness skills that uh that are of a mystical nature, well, they can often have that top down experience. And so uh and that top down experience certainly within the, the level of the out out of body experience or the soul journeying experience uh can become precursors to Kundalini awakening. If you get into the uh to the anatomy of a of an out of body experience, which I you know I'm not going to get into too much on this one. Maybe the next show we'll do the OBE and the Kundalini, and that that can open up some uh, some information about that occurrence if people are interested. Uh, I'm going to get into a sensitive area with regards to the, the Kundalini flesh teacher, and this this sensitive area is the level of devotion. In the West, we have a very, very sour opinion about the word guru, G-U-R-U, which basically means teacher in Sanskrit. Uh, we have somewhat of a sour opinion about giving our power to another person or to another living soul, thinking that, well, if they're alive, they must be in some way weaker than, than a Christ or a Buddha who are dead. And the nice thing about having a dead teacher is, you know, they're not gonna they're not gonna hold it against you if you decide to to do you know something terrible in the name of Christ or in the name of Buddha or in the name of Allah, you know, uh, you know, stoning people buried to their shoulders in the sand and saying, ah, oh, it's in the name of this god or that god, and 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 and, and finding a, a level of of. Uh, permissiveness based upon a religious system. A living teacher, uh, you don't get to run away from that way. I mean, you can still run away. I mean, nobody's, you know, nobody's incarcerated with the teacher. But, but there's a level of, uh, of responsibility uh, that a person may have, especially within a Kundalini context, to to uh, following the teachings that the Kundalini has given them through that flesh, that living teacher. Uh, forgiveness being one of the, the most important teachings that people tend to shy away from uh, because it's not convenient. Or maybe they're so used to holding a grudge that uh, that they, they can't uh, uh, easily extricate themselves from that feeling. So this this devotion that I'm talking about with regard to the flesh teacher is extremely important. And you must be able to open yourself into that teacher's embrace, into that teacher's kundalini, and allow that kundalini from the teacher to merge with the kundalini from yourself. And they will merge. They will merge. As matter of fact, uh, for those of you who are listening in the future and those of you who are listening right now, if you have awakened Kundalini, it's already merging with you. My Kundalini, uh, my voice is a carrier wave of Kundalini going into your eardrum, going from your from your uh, 
from your ears into your spine, into your brain, into your kundalini. Your kundalini is resonating with this information. Um, it is not accidental that I am a kundalini teacher and I have awakened kundalini. It's not accidental at all. I didn't really get much of a choice in that whole idea. And so I know, I know that this force is reaching from me into you and giving you levels of information and balance that you have not yet had up to this point. Giving you greater levels of information beyond what the topic of this show is that suits your particular Kundalini awakening equation. So the more devotion you can give, the more reverence you can give, the more trust you can give, the more sincerity you can give into the teachings that this flesh teacher is giving you, the greater, the greater your experience will be with your Kundalini. The Kundalini knows itself. It knows who it is. And it knows who you are. And the Kundalini knows what flesh living teacher is appropriate for you on this planet at this time. And it's most often it is not the glitzy, uh, uh, well-moneyed uh, uh, teacher that's you know, frumping around the world, you know, saying, oh, I will give you enlightenment and bliss and and this and that, uh, uh, because rarely do they mention the, you know, some of the difficult karmic aspects until you've given them all your money. Um, so, so feel feel what your kundalini is giving you, not what your ego wants to give you. Be devotional to the kundalini teacher, not to your idea of the personality of the kundalini teacher. It's the kundalini in the flesh teacher that one is resonating with, not their personality, not that tool of communication that the flesh kundalini teacher is using in order to communicate kundalini information to you with. It is the kundalini in that flesh teacher that you give reverence to, that you give devotion to that you begin to really, really surrender yourself into. It is not the personality of that kundalini flesh teacher. I need that to be particularly clear for those, of, especially those of us in the West. It is to the living energetic force within that living flesh kundalini teacher. This is this is the guru. Because what is happening is the kundalini is directing information through that teacher into you. Into you and many, many, many other people. If you go, if you, if you follow Eileen's advice and you go to the, to the uh, kundalini awakening systems one dot com site, you start reading some of the writing, you will feel that living grace come from the writing. Uh, if you have the CD, you will feel that living grace come from the CD into you, into your, into your living grace, harmonizing with it, revering it, surrendering itself within it, mixing with it, merging with it. Very, very important for people to understand that when you give reverence to a, a living Kundalini teacher, it is the living aspect of that teacher that you're giving reference to. The living kundalini aspect, not the personality. Yes, yes, the personality is often the conduit of communication, but it's the energy behind that communication. It's the kundalini within the expression of the instructions that are being given or the wisdoms that are being given or the love that is being given from that kundalini awakened teacher that you resonate with. Another thing is, is not all Kundalini teachers are, are uh, you know, floating on a cloud and, you know, handing out, you know, cotton candy and strawberries. Uh, sometimes the teachings need to be hard. Uh, sometimes levels of tough love need to be established. 
And uh, Christ did this, Yogananda's done this, uh, Ramakrishna, Aurobindo. I mean, some of the Hindu teachers have been quite strict, quite strict and with high, high levels of of expected uh, adulation and reverence uh, for that teacher. I'm, I'm much easier, although I do have expectations of people to at least be able to follow the safeties, the safety protocols, and I mentioned those as they are on the, the www.kundaliniawakeningsystems1.com website. Uh, go to the website. It'll be the, on the left-hand menu, fourth, fourth selection down, you'll see the, the safeties. Read them. I have these safeties are in French, in Spanish, in Turkish, uh, in, in, a, in Korean, I believe. Uh, these safeties will help you. Please be able to do that very least. And I'd like to say hello to Aloha Jay and Kan Chao. Hello to the two of you, and and of course all the other guests two one two three one nine two six two four two six seven three two seven seven five and three thousand seven. Hello all of you, and thank you for calling in and and, and listening to this live. Uh, these Kundalini teachers are not common. Most people, most even on the web, uh, there's not very many kundalini teachers that will work with an activated person's kundalini uh, without injecting uh, fear or control or things of that nature. Uh, I feel a bit alone in that I am doing this, but I know that it needs to be done. I don't I don't mind being alone. Solitude is, a, is my friend. Uh, but I just want you to know that it's not such a common thing to find. If you feel that your kundalini is directing you to my teachings, then open to this. Open to this. Uh, I will suggest that you not be the New Age butterfly flying around and tasting of this teaching and tasting of that teaching. And If you know you have kundalini and if your kundalini has led you here, then here is where you need to be. Um, the ego can often go, oh, well, I'll just try this and I'll try this and I'll try that and I'll try this and I'll I'll taste this and I'll sip that and I'll chew on this and I'm going to suggest that you just sit down, stop flitting around, go into meditation and see where it is your kundalini wants you to learn from. And if it wants you to learn from from Chrism then then really, really, really bury yourself into the teachings of Chrism. If, if it wants you to learn from somebody else, then really, really, really get down and bury yourself in those teachings. Kundalini isn't something that you flit around with. Kundalini is actual enlightenment upon the body with physiological expression and changes. Uh, people can go crazy with this. Even people that have had it, uh, say, say a person is, had the Kundalini awaken, they go to the psych ward for years and years, they come back on lithium and and you know some of the other you know really strong tranquilizers, uh, and they and they they come out of it. Well, the kundalini can pick up where it left off in a heartbeat. So you really need to devote yourself to the specific living kundalini teacher that the kundalini itself within you has directed you to. Now I, I want to put out the uh, the phone number again. Uh, the area code is three four seven. Nine three four zero zero two six. You're going to hear a phone ringing in the back, and I apologize, but it's just going to keep ringing. Hello, hello, Haji. Hello, hello. What is that? Is that a some sort of animation? Well, hello, hello there. <laughs> Thanks for writing something. Um. So yeah, if anybody has wants to call in and uh, Ken Zhao, hello. I see that you're typing as well. Ah, uh, practicing Tantra meditation tonight. Ah, Tantra. Uh, so, yes, yes, yes. If, if the Kundalini has led you into uh, these teachings that I am offering, that I'm going to strongly suggest that you come into them fully. Submerge yourself into them. It's no accident that you're hearing them. 
It is no accident that you're hearing them. It is a blessing that you are being given, and and I will just uh, suggest that you do not let your ego hijack this blessing away from you. Take advantage of what it is that is being offered to you. And for those of you that are studying uh, Tantra, such as Aloha, Jay, hello, uh, Tantra is Tantra is the pathway towards the Kundalini. So if your Kundalini is giving you uh, Tantra teachings, know that uh, you are on the way uh, to beginning an awakening process towards Kundalini. Um, Tantra can be a difficult path only because there's so much taboo associated with it and and uh in the west uh that can that taboo can really kind of get in the way uh but if you can if you can bring yourself above the the, the many taboos of tantra then uh it can be it can be a very uh strong activation uh, expression for the kundalini let's see and usually listen to you on the archive home today, so decide to listen live. Well, thank you, Kanjao. I, I hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> but anyway, uh, as as any of you who may be listening, and if you do listen to the archives, you are getting that, that kundalini energy that comes through me into you. So in a way, there is a form of Shaktipat that is being given, Shaktipat being the Sanskrit word for transmission of kundalini. And this is as it needs to be. I am not a well-known teacher, and, and so I am not getting accidental students. All the students that I get, uh, private or otherwise, are people that have been led there by the energy within themselves, by that guidance that is giving them uh, into a path of enlightenment. And so I want to welcome all of you, all of you who are live right now. Hello, everyone and all of you who are listening in the future in the archives. And uh, I'm going to leave this last 17 minutes open for anybody that wants to call. Hello, Ravenice. Ravenice, I think I'm I'm getting that right. I see that you're writing on the chat group. And Ravenice, aloha, Jay, Kanjao. If you'd like to call in, the number is 347-934-0026. Uh, let's see. Ravenese, ah, yes, thank you, thank you. Is it possible to take advice from more than one Kundalini activated teacher? Uh, that, you know, there you go, there you go, Ravenese. That is a very good question. I will suggest that the uh, the Kundalini in you will, will will want to choose one to come from. Now, it depends. Is it a living teacher? If it's a living teacher, then I'll suggest that Ravenese that it will be one teacher. If it's a, a if it's a dead teacher or a deceased teacher, then there can be many different ones. Uh, so, you know, Yogananda or Obindu, Vivekananda, Jesus, Buddha. You know, uh, you know any of the Tibetan masters that, that were also, uh, uh, you know, Kundalini awakened. Uh, so yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, if it's a deceased teacher, then of course uh, they have left their teachings for for people to partake of and. And uh, there is an energetic signature that is left, especially, uh, 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 say, with Yogananda. You know, he left a fairly strong uh, energetic uh, resonance within his writings, but also at his different ashrams uh, that I visited in the Los Angeles area. And uh, you can feel it. But with a living teacher, a uh, living teacher, someone who is uh, going to go inside you and, and feel and harmonize with your kundalini, uh, the, the suggestion, I'm sure, from your kundalini will be for you to choose one that you feel resonates best with you or that your kundalini feels resonates best with how it wants you to mature within your kundalini awakening equation. So, hello, hello. And Ravenese, thank you. That's an excellent question. Thank you for asking that. And, and if anybody else on the chat group uh, has a question that they would like to ask without calling in, please, please feel free to to uh, ask the. Uh, thank you, Ravenese. Thank you. 
to, to add, write the question on the uh, chat group. I'm not sure I can tell you how to get to the chat group. I'm going to bring Santara on right now. Santara, how do they get to the chat group? Is there any special way? Well, it's interesting. I'm actually not too sure. I, I'm not too sure. Maybe, for example, I can see some people on the chat room, and I don't think they're seeing themselves in the chat room. I will try and find that out for next week for sure, and I'll let you know. Yeah. Sorry, okay, I have no you, information now. No, 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 no. That's quite all right. Quite all right. I'm going to go ahead and put you on hold here. And then, yeah, so... so um, Ravenese or Aloha Jay or Kanjao or any of the guests with their numbers, if you have a question you would like to ask, then I'm open uh, for another 14 minutes to to answer that. Let's go back into the devotion uh, aspect. Uh, and this, this Ravenese, uh, this also ties in a bit to your question as well. Um, as you come in, to the presence of a kundalini awakened teacher. You know, you know for a fact that this person is kundalini awakened, not just charismatic. Okay, the Buddhists call many of the uh, of the uh, awakening systems as they call them charisms, and uh, you know, uh, and that that's just another word for symptoms. Uh, make sure that the person that you're considering to be kundalini active is actually in essence kundalini awakened that this person is is really resonating with your own energetic principle with your own energetic spiritual equation and then as you find this person and they're not common Ravenese they are not common when you find them devote yourself to them if they will let you Devote yourself to them. Feel their energy through the love that they give to you and the love that you give to them. Bond with them as strongly as you can. Uh, Go outside of the tolerance of society. Go outside of the tolerance of society so that you're not bound by the parameters of society. Your kundalini will not steer you wrong. Your kundalini will not steer you into a person who is not healthy for you. Trust that source within you. Trust that source within you and allow that kundalini awakened teacher to give to you the knowledge and the exercises and the instructions and the wisdom uh, that comes from their kundalini awakened source. Visit them in person. Talk to them on Skype. Talk to them on the phone. Read their writings. And if you read their writings and you and you see how, say, they interact with a within a, a, a an online society or something like that, and you look at them, how they are responding, um, you can you can get a pretty clear idea. If you do a uh, if you do a search of them on the internet, that may not be the best way because then you're going to have all the people that didn't didn't like them for whatever uh, ego reasons that they had, and this has occurred for me as well. Uh, uh, so you get a you know the hatred comes out much more on on the searches than than the uh, than the love. If you go into the community, however, uh, the love comes in much much cleaner. It seems it, it, it seems the love the love is reticent to advertise itself, but the hatred never is. The hatred wants everyone to know. Okay. Um, so yeah, one last time for the numbers three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. As much as you can, go into devotional practices and the. The Kundalini flesh teacher will will give you instruction on how to do the devotion. There are very, very, very ancient protocols for uh, devotional uh, expressions. And I practice these protocols with my private students, and uh, they go very well, especially in conjunction with the practice of the safety protocols. And I must tell you, 
that for a person to become a private student of mind, they must, they must begin a daily practice of the safeties. And some of the students are practicing them twice a day. Okay. And then if we start doing Skype work or in-person work, then there are, there are many, many other levels of devotional uh, uh, practice that can, uh, that can be given. Uh, one of them is just taking a drive with me in a car. Um, you know, uh, Amelia Santara and Eileen Laurel have both taken very, very long journeys with me, uh, and other students have taken very long journeys with me in a car. And a lot of radiance is collected by that person just by sitting uh, next to the to the awakened teacher that way. Uh, so that's another option that that uh, a living teacher can give is that one-on-one, person-to-person experience, or even one-on-four, one-on-ten, or one-on-twenty. I mean, I've had many more than just one person come come into the field of radiance. And the living Kundalini person gives off a huge uh, radiance footprint upon the world. I mean, it, it's a it's a it's a large expression of Kundalini radiance that comes through that awakened person. And, and as you will feel that emanating from yourself, uh, you can imagine how it emanates from the the person that's had the awakened Kundalini for such a long time, and it's such an expression. Not everybody that has the awakened Kundalini is a is a teacher of the Kundalini. Um, that is a that's just a, a rarer quality of the of the expression in the Kundalini upon this world. Uh, not everybody is set up to be a teacher. Not not everybody has the time or the desire to do that. And not everybody's kundalini requires that of them. Mine, mine does. And so I'm there for you if, if that is something that you wish to partake of. And you can contact me privately at K-Fire for All. That's K-F-I-R-E-F-O-R-A-L-L at yahoo.com. So feel free to contact me privately if you have questions or concerns or if you're interested in in working with a Kundalini Awakened Flesh teacher. Um, In the meantime, I would like to say once again that there is a Boston event uh, being hosted by Liz. And Liz's email is uh, LZ as in zebra, H-A-O, the number six, at Comcast.net for registration. So make sure that you give her uh, uh, an email, and uh, and then uh, you can go go ahead and get ready for that. Um, also, uh, uh, you can contact uh, Eileen at e l o r o five five at yahoo.com or Santara at Kundalini Matters at gmail.com. And so uh, feel free to contact any of those people with regards to the Boston event. Uh, both, of them, uh, both of them will be there, and uh, so you get to meet them as well. Uh, with the Kundalini Awakened Flesh Teacher, be prepared to give yourself into that equation. Be prepared to go beyond the societal parameters of of what is appropriate or what is appropriate. Doesn't you know? Don't do the Jim Jones thing. Though. I'm not saying that uh, you know, you know, you know, uproot yourself and then move to to a place and then you know, if, if the crazy leader says drink this Kool Aid, well then you drink the Kool Aid. I'm not saying that at all. When once again your kundalini, your kundalini will not give you into a person of that level. Kundalini is not that common in the populations. It feels like it's more common because you know we have the internet, and so people of like mind, you know, can can come together, and so you know within the the you know the, the seven and a half billion people on this planet, yeah, you can get you can get uh, what would be considered a large number of kundalini awakened people in one space and and what a blessing the internet is for that reason 
but within the populations, it is not common. And, and Eileen is, is, is writing, just found the chat room here. Kristen, thank you for allowing me to share with others a bit of my experience. And gratitude for your grace and love and selfless service. Thank you, Eileen, for being brave enough to come on and share. Not, not many people have that, that courage. So thank you, Eileen. And thank you, Centara. And thank you, Rosemary. And thank you, Fashji. And thank everybody on the chat group, uh, Ravenese and and Aloha Jay and Kanjao. Uh, thank you very much for participating in this program at this time. Uh, don't follow a leader that your ego is tying you to. You know, don't follow a leader because you like his clothes or, you you know, she's a, an attractive girl. Or, you know, don't follow a leader that promises you riches and, and um, uh, you know, um, any of the uh, physical suggestions of wealth and, and, uh, and great power over other people. Do not. Follow those people. Those are not Kundalini awakened teachers. Those are teachers that are operating from a level of ego and a level of of want of gain and fear of loss. Uh, instead, go to the teacher that is, you know, they'll be somewhat plain, uh, uh, not always wealthy. Sometimes they will be wealthy. The Kundalini awakened flesh teacher may be wealthy. Uh, but but go to the one that your kundalini is sending you to. Read the safeties. And if you agree with the safeties, then you may agree with what the kundalini in me has in store for you. And uh, once again, I'd like to leave you with some of the, uh, the, the contact areas for where you can receive this information online and and the, the first area is, of course, Kundalini Awakening Systems One uh, dot com. And I want to thank Glenn Ola for putting that site together. And then uh, uh, Kundalini Matters at Gmail dot com, which is uh, Santara's blog, and Kundalini Living at Gmail dot com, which is Eileen Laurel's blog, Ascension Kundalini which is uh, my blog on the Internet. Also, uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 at Yahoo Groups, uh, dot com and uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 at uh, the Facebook groups and then uh, Kundalini Exclamation Point at Facebook or Facebook, Facebook. <laughs> and Kundalini, a Kundalini Ashram, which is which is a, a group and a community that is more dedicated to the devotional aspects of how how you relate to the Kundalini in a in a in a Kundalini flesh teacher. So, for those of you that would like to explore that experience, uh, and it's a strong experience, I must say. Before I go, I've got a, less than two minutes. Devotion. Uh, with a kundalini flesh teacher is the strongest and safest way to explore the deep kundalini uh, that I am teaching. And so I just got a, a warning from uh, <laughs> from Blog Talk Radio that it's going to cut me off in 90 seconds. So I just want to say blessings to all of you who have listened and participated in this program today. And I look forward to having another conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience next week. Same place, same time, same channel. Thanks for listening.